The case of a missing boy and a family once unified by a common cause, now polarized by suspicion. Kyron Horman was last seen at his elementary school in early June. Since then, a series of troubling revelations about his stepmother, including secrets about her past and sinister accusations against her, have emerged. And now the boy's biological parents firmly believe that she knows what happened to their son. Mike Von Fremd has the report. It is our hope, our prayer after today. It's been a month since seven-year-old Kyron Horman went missing. His biological parents, Desiree and Kane Horman, have not yet given up hope. I can't bring myself to put his laundry away, um, and I won't make his bed, because when I walk in there, I want to feel like he's still been in the room. Since Kyron went missing, both Desiree and Kane have come to believe that Terry Horman, Kyron's stepmother, is guilty of something related to their son's disappearance. Do you think there's a possibility that the woman you're legally married to could be innocent? I think that the percentages are so small that I have no optimis optimism in that regard, no. Kyron's stepmother, Terry Horman, has not been charged with any crime. But in the early days of the investigation, law enforcement even said she was helpful. But now Terry and her attorney are refusing any comment, as family members accuse the stepmother of hiding critical information from the police. Terry, after all, was the last person to see Kyron when she dropped him off early at school for a science fair. But when school started, Kyron was marked absent. He walked by the hallway and I'm like, hi Kyron, he's like, hi, I'm gonna go see this cool one, the electric one. And I'm like, all right, bye, and that's the last time I saw him. He never did make it back to class. The entire school day passed, and when Kyron did not come home on the bus, Terry called the school at 3.45 that afternoon, and the school then dialed 911. The community has rallied to find the missing seven-year-old. We as the family know how difficult and stressful this is, but your memories and statements can help us find Kyron. Authorities were at first optimistic. Kyron, we're going we're gonna to bring you home, buddy. But Desiree says she did not believe Terry when the stepmother told her over the phone that the boy just went missing at school. I knew that the science fair was from 8 to 10, and I thought she was going to be present that whole time. Um, when I got the call, there was just certain details that didn't make any sense to me and gave me that sick to my stomach feeling. Under the spotlight, 40-year-old Terry Horman became an increasingly strange character in the public's eye. Surprising pictures of her days as a bodybuilder surfaced, as well as a mugshot of her 2005 DUI. Kane says Terry even failed a lie detector test and walked out on another, a charge that authorities have not yet confirmed. All this information is, is information that we got directly from her in the middle of you know, our kitchen at the house between family and relatives or, you know, and, and friends where yeah. she's telling us all this. Yeah. And then from there it is, you know, our, our imperative to her is, well, you need to go back and you need to finish it. You need yeah. to go through this. You need to get through these milestones. You need to get through these hoops. And for 10 more days, roughly, she absolutely refused to go back and do it again. Then shocking headlines surfaced that Terry Horman allegedly attempted to bribe her landscaper with large sums of money to kill her husband. The landscaper, in fact, um, assisted police and uh, either wore a body wire but agreed to have a further conversation with Terry Horman, and, which was recorded by investigators. But the plan sting by investigators to gather incriminating evidence did not go as planned. When the landscaper approached Terry for hush money, she called the police, and the undercover operation was foiled. Once the alleged sting was exposed, the family spoke to the media. We are extremely confident in how the investigation is going to bring him home to us. We implore Terry Horman to fully cooperate with the investigators to bring Kyron home. Kane Horman filed for divorce from Terry, and his handwritten petition to a judge for a restraining order has now been made public. Kane Horman writing, I believe respondent Terry is involved in the disappearance of my son, Kyron. I also recently learned that respondent attempted to hire someone to murder me. You married this woman. You must have loved her? Absolutely. Do you feel betrayed? Absolutely. I think we all do. Unfortunately, I'm kind of at that point where I'm so angry I don't even have words. Uh, 
I just really want her to do the right thing. And I can't say it enough that Kyron is still out there and he needs to be home. For the first time, Kane Horman offered what he thinks may be a possible motive. He says Terry changed after the birth of their baby girl, Kiera, 19 months ago. She went through some postpartum depression um, after the birth and um, her emotional state was just uh, more erratic. Now law enforcement experts say Terry's demeanor seems evasive and ice cold. Do you know where Kyron is? Hey. Do you know where, Terry, do you know where Kyron is? Earlier today, she looked upset and refused to answer questions from reporters. Why won't you talk with investigators? Are you cooperating? This gal seems to have antifreeze in her veins. Could she be innocent? You know, she could be, but I'd bet just about anything I have, she's guilty. Can she keep this up? I would like to think not because my son's involved, but I have a feeling that she'll never, ever give in. I don't think she's going to tell the truth. She hasn't told the truth for seven and a half years that I have known her. For now, the family is holding on to the only hope they have, praying that they will be able to take Kyron on summer vacation in a few weeks. I just want to fix it. I'm a mom. I want to fix it. I want him home. I want to go find him. I, and the fact that I'm relying on somebody to come forward and tell me what they know is extremely frustrating for me. All I can say is that my focus right now is on finding our son. And I don't care what I have to go through between now and whenever he's found, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I have to pay. It doesn't matter what I have to do. It, it, it just doesn't matter. This is Mike Von Frem for Nightline in Portland, Oregon.